So the third and final question we're going to answer today is from Eduardo Romani. Is it important the number of process, cores per processor or only the total number of cores? The number one supercomputer has 260 cores per processor and the others have 12 or 16. And that's a very um, uh, clever, a good observation. And this was one of the reasons we asked you in one of the exercises to look at, to compare Archer as an architecture with, with Pease Dine, which is the, the very large supercomputer uh, top three in the world at the moment in, in, um, in Switzerland. And the point there, this is the, the trade-off between using general purpose processors or, or many core accelerators. So um, just I'll, I'll explain, I'll go on to what's important later, but I'll just explain where this comes from. A standard machine which has 12 or 16 um, cores per processor will be using standard Intel processors, multi-core processors. As I said, my laptop here maybe has two or four a, a, a departmental server or a business server might have four or eight. The high-end uh, processors have 12, 16, that kind of number. And as we've seen, we maybe put a couple of these processors in a node. But a node will have, you know, a few tens of, of, of cores. And that's because they're using a mainstream, um, typically Intel currently, uh, processors. And the issue with them is that they're designed for a whole range of purposes. They're completely general purpose. So an awful lot of the circuitry on them is, is for things that we don't really want and need in supercomputing, where for, for, for scientific and technical calculations, we're really focused on, on, on floating point calculations and, and not lots of other multimedia and, and general purpose computing. And so that gives you this power problem. And a lot of the power, potentially a lot of power uh, going to the, to the CPU is, is powering things that we don't really need. So, so that's where that class of machines comes from. The other class of machines comes from using much more specialized many core processors. You've picked the, um, the Sunway uh, machine there, there where, where they have 260 cores per processor. I think that's four, four actually, I think it comes from four CPUs each with, with six, um, of 64 cores. But you're up into the many, ten so, so there are architectures which have that many core architectures. And the classic ones are uh, the ones used in, in, in the, the Chinese national supercomputer, the Sunway architecture. We have the, the Intel um, Xeon Phi range, Knight's Landing from the current one, which has 60 um, a CPU cores. Or, or we have GPUs, which depending on how you count them, I mean, it's difficult, but have many, uh, many, potentially many hundreds or even thousands of very simple cores. And the important point is that the reason that these have many cores is they're very simple. So, so they're very simple, m much simpler than you'd have on a general purpose CPU. And so because they're simpler, they're not so general purpose, but they're, they're, they're much better uh, or more focused at doing floating point calculations. So, 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 so they wouldn't be particularly useful for general purpose computing, but they're targeted uh, at, at numerical computing. And so it's really horses for courses. It doesn't, I mean, the other, well, the other issue is, as we mentioned, uh, um, I think in week two, actually the limiting factor for many um, supercomputing calculations isn't, isn't the number of floating point operations, but it's the memory bandwidth. So in fact, and you look at a process, you look at a, a, an architecture, you say, well, each node, each process has 260 cores, this only has 12 or 16. The two things you need to ask yourself are, what is the peak performance of those two? Because obviously the, the, there's a large number of cores uh, on the accelerators, but typically the performance per core will, will be less. The clock speed might be less. But more importantly, what you're really interested in is, is the memory bandwidth. How much memory can these CPUs read and write? And actually, for supercomputing, that's really the advantage of, of, of G, the GPU architecture. It has a very, very high floating point performance. It's quite difficult to achieve that because the because they're quite simple and they're quite they're a bit, bit harder to program than the general purpose uh, CPU. But they have a memory bandwidth three or four times what you get on the standard CPU. And that's actually been designed for the games market, but we find it useful for supercomputing. So it's really a packaging technology here. You, the number of cores per processor isn't really a big deal. Uh, you're gonna stick lots of these together onto a high performance network to build a supercomputer. So actually, what you're really interested in, the total number of cores in your computer. But of course, you have to worry about how performant they are. And so, you know, you have a large number of cores per processor. They're probably not as, 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 as um, powerful per core as the ones in the standard CPU. So there's a trade-off there. And so, um, in fact, but for a real very large-scale high-end supercomputer, the other things you really want to look at 
uh, not just the total number of cores and what the performance per core is, what's the memory bandwidth, can these cores actually read and write data at the, at the rate they need to, to keep them fed, it's sort of like feeding a monster, can they, can they, they can process really quickly, but can they actually read data fast enough? And also other factors like, like, like the network performance, there's no point in having uh, hundreds of thousands of cores uh, stuck together with, with a, uh, a very slow network, because any time uh, you have to communicate the overhead, as we saw from Amdahl's law, is just going to start to dominate. So that was a really good question. Um, there's lots of factors you have to consider. It's not just the total number of cores that's important, not the number of cores per CPU that's, that's important. It's a whole bunch of factors. But this is an interesting question because it does point out that there are these two classes of architectures at the moment, one using general purpose CPUs, which have a few tens of CPU cores, quite high performance but general purpose, and we have the accelerated architectures, many core GPU architectures, which have hundreds of cores, much more dedicated to floating point calculation and possibly higher memory bandwidth, but more difficult to program. So, I mean, I don't know if I answered your question there, but I hope uh, I, I, I pointed out the, the, the issues. And it was, it is a very good question, and it does illustrate this current um, uh, bifurcation in the market, these two different classes of supercomputers you'll see on the top 500 list.